Okay, welcome back. It's Lionel Tech Lead and partner at West Vault. And today I was doing some modifications to Stealth Startup and I decided to turn it into a tutorial. So um, what I'm going to do is show you guys how to use the data provider widget and add a keyword search filter using E2 framework, which I am a expert in, right? I just keep doing E2. So we're just going to jump here and, and explain very quickly what I'm talking about. So here I have the stealth startup, right? And I have a, what is displayed as a grid. And I've been using this for a little while and I found that, you know, what if I just want to search for Coinbase, right? I don't like if this list was very, very long and in the production version, it is very, very long then how do I actually uh, filter it? And I didn't build any search filters over here. So I have a date filter, I have a time filter, but how do I search this? I could probably arrange this by alphabet. So that's like a sort order, but how do I uh, basically add the filter? So today I'm gonna show you how to do that in uh, E2. Uh, let's just get onto it. Let me open up the uh, Sublime. Okay, so we're going to look at the trade index page, which is what obviously appears in the page. And down here, all I've got is a simple, um, I've got my search model as it's recursive through there. Search model, get attribute and models as model. So how, what the first thing I'm going to do is obviously I am going to add a form. Uh, if we want to add the additional search. So uh, where I want to put it? Shall I put it before any or after any? Let's put it after any. Okay. Form field. Okay. Model. And it's called market. That's all uh, it is. And uh, well, let's put a placeholder. Uh, so now I have a search market there. Okay, so that's good. I mean, when you press the filter button, it doesn't really do anything. So now we've got to basically wire it up. So we've got this new variable called model and market. So all we have to do is go into controller. Okay, and let's look at our trade. And let's look at this. Okay, search model, get search parameters. So we want to go into uh, search model and here's the search. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a very simple uh, thing called and filter where and filter where uh, market this market. Okay, so that just tells me if market is set, filter it. If not, just ignore it. And this is a very powerful um, uh, function that's set by the ORM, the Object Oriented Model, ORM. So I basically have a table called trade, right? And I'm running a find and I'm just running all these filters on it. I don't actually have to know how to write SQL. You don't see any SQL here. I don't have to worry if something's filtered or not. I don't have to even validate the data because these functions are going to do that hard work for me. At the same time, right, I'm going to use E2's model control. And you can see it here in the trade on top. That will handle the validation, you know, so you can write that. You can put that as a string that's max 50. You can do all these things. It's going to be handled by the E2 framework. So once that's done, right, that's all. The most important thing is that I have created a model with the variable called market. So that's the market that we are filtering for. This is like a trading platform. And I'm going to basically use the system to filter this, um, filter out that record. So let's take a look at how it goes. All right, I want to pop my screen there here and let's see how we go. Make sure you save everything and let's reload. Okay, and I'm just going to put something in there and see what happens. 
Okay, so B is completely gone. So I think it's actually searching for the exact match. So you can actually go in here. This is another powerful thing about E2, this super uh, configuration, um, uh, what do you call it, this super um, logging system. I really like this one a lot. And we're just gonna drop into database and we're just gonna look at the sure part. You can even scroll this up. Okay, and then we just wanna filter for select. Okay, so we're running here where month equals and year date user tree, blah, 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 blah. So the date and month is okay, but the filter is not actually running for this word B. Let's try this with BBB. Okay, so when market equals BBB, so that's like a full um, exact match. We don't want that. We're probably going to change it to a like. So all we can do is go back here. Go and filter where um, I think it's in three, isn't it? Okay, so it's like and uh, market. So like market is like um, this market. So instead of a exact match, we're going to run a like. And there it is. Okay, let's take a look. Um, let's see a T. So we got this, or we can just filter the whole thing. And let's go for Apple. There you go. That's a filter. So I've done it in an extremely easy way using the power of the three things that you're looking at, which is number one, the form manager, which is over here. Okay, you have your form, you have your input, and then I can obviously, this is just HTML guys, but what I really like is actually inserting the word model here. And this is the model that we're talking about is the trade row. That makes it very easy to manage that. The other thing is then just the fact that I don't have to do HTML. I can just stay like this and then write and remove labels. This makes it very easy and very consistent among your team if they're doing HTML. Uh, you don't even have to touch any kind of HTML. Okay, so I've just adjusted the field here by just inserting the style. This is again a array and you can just change it from the PHP. So I've just added filters up here and I'm now able to filter based on the market in just one simple command, okay? And you can just change it over there to you know 75 or whatever distance you want, how big you want it to be. There you go. So I've added a filter, I've added some cool little features and um, that's it. Okay, so here I've decided to take it one step further by adding some JavaScript and CSS. So I put a search box over here that has some code uh, that will, when it's changing, will update the top. The reason is that here we have a form sitting here. I can't make a form appear over here because this is where our data is. I try not to mix the two, but look, there are other ways to go around it with JavaScript. I've decided to just use JS. A little bit messy, but it gets the job done. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is just basically just hide this and then it will be basically magic. And we can do this just by changing it from a um, text field into a hidden field. So we just do go over here and say, all right, I don't want this anymore. I want hidden input. Okay, and this should do the trick. It should vanish. Yes, it's done. And here's a little circle thing. I might want to hide this entire row and then when I click it, I toggle it. We can add that later. But let's take a look now of that I want to search for union. Okay, let's press the filter button and see what happens. Okay, perfect. If I just want it all empty. Sweet, okay. So the other thing is that probably is the filter going there. So I will just simply just put a command here. Uh, in the bottom and we can just obviously just put value equals to open 
equals model um, market. Let's go search model. Okay, there you go. So it's pretty simple, not too difficult over here to handle this, and we can just clean it out. Okay, so final uh, little change here. Just wanted to put it in a little uh, using the Bootstrap for uh, collapse function. So now we can put this in. And we can just filter that and we can just press the filter button and we get the whole thing. And then if I want this, I would say, okay, I want coin C O I and I'll filter. And that's it folks. That's the, uh, so as you can see, right, this is how we can add the toggle feature and I can just change this, add the filter. And then we've got the whole thing. And if I want just Apple, I can just put that in and I can just filter. So this is how easy it is for me to add it using the data uh, provider and the uh, model, the E2 model to filter it out. I think that only took about two and a half to three minutes. The actual uh, writing up the JavaScript to hide all this kind of stuff, move it down, hide this thing. That actually took me 15 minutes because my mic is in the way. But you can see how fast and easy it is and how powerful E2 is. So thanks a lot. That's the bottom line because the Ted Lee said so.